Hi everyone, it's Christina from the DIYMommy.com and today I want to show you how to make a beautiful knit dishcloth. This is a great knit project for beginners. I have recently fell back in love with knitting when I got this sweater kit and I made this sweater and I remembered how much I love knitting. I used to do it all the time before I had kids. So I'm working on some patterns that I'm going to share with you soon like this adorable toque and I'm working on a mitten pattern for you. Going to share those soon on the channel here for beautiful DIY Christmas presents. But I thought this dishcloth was the perfect project to start with. I love using these because they're nice and scrubby. They scrub all my plates and pots so well. Plus they are super simple to knit. So if you've never knitted before or if you're a beginner, this is a great project for you. So here's the standard washcloth size that most people make and it is a really nice size for scrubbing most pots and dishes. So lots of people just use a cotton yarn. So this is the Handicrafter cotton. I will leave a link to it in the description box below, but you can use whatever type of cotton yarn you like. There are also polyester yarns that have like an extra scrubby factor to those. I will leave those down in the description box below. Then you just need a pair of knitting needles, so size 7 or size 8. I like metal and bamboo needles. I'm not a fan of the plastic ones, but really that's all up to you. So first begin with a slip knot. So just make a loop like this and then make another loop and pull that through the first loop. And then tighten your knot to create your slip knot. You do want to leave a tail of about 6 inches. Then take one of your knitting needles and put it through the slip knot that you've created. And then just pull the tail and the working yarn nice and snug around the knitting needle. Then what I do is I put one yarn over my finger and then one yarn over my thumb like this. And then I take my knitting needle, I put it through the bottom piece of yarn and then up and over the top one. So under the bottom one up and over the top one and pull it through that bottom loop. And this is called casting on. So for this dishcloth, you're gonna to wanna to cast on four stitches just like I'm doing here. So again, hold one piece with your thumb and one with your finger like this, and then cast on a stitch. So once you have four stitches cast on, turn your needle around so you're holding it in your left hand, take your right hand and grab the working yarn, and then you can place it over the index finger of your left hand, and then you take your other knitting needle, and you put the tip through the stitch, grab the working yarn, and pull it through that stitch, and then you can pull the stitch off the needle. This is called a knit stitch, and you just continue on knitting all four stitches that you've cast on. Make sure when you're knitting to pull the stitches nice and snugly on your needle. This will create a nice even look. Now you're going to turn your needle around and do the next row. So you do a knit stitch again. Another knit stitch, putting your needle into the stitch, pulling a piece of yarn through, and then you're going to do what's called a yarn over. So I just wrap my yarn around my needle. This is going to create some little eyelets all around your dishcloth, plus it's going to increase each row size because you're basically knitting this diagonally from corner to corner. Flip your needle around again and repeat this process. Take your needle, place it through the stitch, make a knit stitch, do another one, then do a yarn over by putting the yarn in front of the needle, and then continue knitting all the rest of the stitches on the row. So the basic pattern for this, basically the whole way from the beginning to the middle of the dishcloth is knitting two stitches per row, doing a yarn over, and then knitting all of the rest of the stitches on the row. It's very simple and once you get into the rhythm of this, it is so fun to do while you're doing something else like watching TV or a movie or just wanting to relax. And every time you do that yarn over, you're increasing the number of stitches on each row so your dishcloth is going to get larger and larger until you're right at the center of your dishcloth. 
For the purposes of this video, I'm only going to make the longest row of this dishcloth 22 stitches. So it's going to be a smaller little scrubby sized dishcloth. However, like I said at the beginning of the video, most people make these dishcloths to be about to be about 44 stitches at the middle of the dishcloth. All right, so now I'm at the middle of my dishcloth, which with 22 stitches on my dishcloth. So just for, for reference, this is the 44 stitch one on the bottom, and here's my little 22 stitch scrubby size. Now you're going to start decreasing the rows when you want to make the dishcloth start getting smaller. So now you're just going to knit one stitch, and then you're going to do what's called knitting two stitches together. So you take your knitting needle in your right hand, and you put it through instead of one stitch, two stitches, and then pull the working yarn through. So you're knitting two stitches together and decreasing your row. Then you do another yarn over and then do another knit two together. So here what you're doing is you're decreasing the row by one stitch because you're knitting two together two times. However, you're doing that yarn over still because you want that pretty little eyelet all around the dishcloth, even on the de decreasing side. So this helps do that. And then you continue on like you did in the first part of this pattern where you just knit through all the rest of the stitches on your needle. And then once you get to the end of each row on this side of the dishcloth, do the same thing, flip your needle around, and then continue on in this pattern. So you're knitting one, and then you're going to knit two stitches together by placing your needle through two stitches instead of just one, pulling the yarn through, doing that yarn over with the needle behind the yarn, doing another knit two together, and then continuing knitting all the rest of the stitches on the row. Once you have only four stitches left on your dishcloth, you're going to do what's called a cast off to get rid of the yarn. So you're going to knit one as normal, then you're going to knit another one as per normal, and then what you do is you take your left needle, put it through the first stitch on your right needle, and pull it over that second stitch. And that's going to bind off stitch number one. Then you knit another stitch and do the same thing. With your left needle, pull the first stitch over the second stitch to bind it off. And then continue until you have four, all four stitches bound off. You're going to end up with one more loop on your dishcloth when you're all finished. And then you can cut your yarn, leave a string of about four inches to six inches, place that string through the loop and pull it tightly. You can kind of stretch out your little dishcloth to make it the shape you want. And then take a darning needle so it's one of those larger needles that you can fit yarn through. Put the tails of yarn that you have left on your work through the darning needle, and then you're just going to weave those ends through your dishcloth. So I just, I just pick kind of a zigzag pattern of stitches, and with this particular yarn, there's so many color variations that I'm just trying to pull my yarn through a similar stitch of a similar color so that my tail isn't very visible. This will help keep your knitting from unraveling and make your work look nice and finished. Once you've woven it through a few stitches, you can trim off any excess yarn with scissors. And then you just repeat this process with the other tail of yarn that you have to weave through your finished work. And 
and trim off any excess yarn again. And that is it. That is how easy it is to knit and how easy it is to knit a sweet little dishcloth. I think these would make fantastic gifts for Christmas. You can make them in all shapes and sizes, in colors that match the recipient's homes. You could maybe pair them with one of the beeswax wraps that I've made for my kitchen. I will link to that video in the description box below. And they're a great project to start with if you're just learning how to knit. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more DIY and decor ideas. Don't forget to hit that bell when you subscribe. I'm going to be adding tons more DIYs and some knitting tutorials for Christmas gifts this year. I'm going to leave some more videos that I hope you're going to enjoy up in the top left hand corner.